all of you up. For the last two hours, you've been sitting three hours. Okay. I'm going to randomly, because I don't want to waste time, select five people who are going to come to the front. Come. <laughs> Isabel. Maron, please come. I need two more people. Do I have any volunteers? So I can feel like, okay, they're done. Let me get some young men. And Tim? Okay. The five random people <laughs> that I have selected. We're going to play something very fun. It's an energizer called Pepeta. I Pepeta. So to make sure everyone understands, so I don't know I'm going to do this with the mic, but we're going to do it. So I got the ball. You can say, I got the ball. I put it here. I Pepeta. I Pepeta. Okay? Are we all in unison? So I'm going to say, I got the ball. You guys are going to say, I put it here. And then I'll say, Pepeta. Okay? Right. I got the ball. I put yeah, I pepeta, I pepeta, I pepeta. Uh huh. So James, tell us where the ball goes next, right? So we can get the ball. We put it on our knee, on our backs, on our feet. Let's be creative, okay? So we'll start with where we started in the beginning. So I got the ball. I put it here. I pepeta. I pepeta. Uh huh. Put it at the back. I got the ball. So we move up. So it's I got the ball. I put it here. I pepeta. I pepeta. Then the next time we do, I have the ball. I put it here. I pepeta. I pepeta. So it's a song, okay? So I have the ball. I put it here. I pepeta. I pepeta. You got the ball. I got the ball. You put it here. Put it here at the back. I pepeta. I have the ball. I put it here. I pepeta. Better. I pepeta. Higher. Okay. Okay. So let's make the default here so we don't fall. Okay. So <laughs> I have the ball. I put it here. Put it here. I put it here. I pepeta. I pepeta. I pepeta. Okay. I have the ball. I. Put I pepeta. I pepeta. I have the ball. I put it where? I put it here. I pepeta. I pepeta. I pepeta. I don't know about you. I went to one of them. I planned to go to all of them. I enjoyed mine so much. I never moved out of it. Um, but we had two great rounds. Well, the morning one focused on drivers of change and the afternoon one on partnerships for impact. And as the rapporteurs come up, and uh, they are slowly coming up, um, we have asked them to give, like they did this morning, a report back in five minutes. Very heroic, given that there were two breakout sessions today. They have been asked to summarize the main conclusions of their sessions, and this time to focus on the identification of knowledge gaps, on suggestions for priority research areas and approaches, on key partnerships, and on mechanisms needed for engaging with partners. The first breakout session is on the Africa, and I'd like to ask Asetu Drame Yaye to come up and make her presentation, sharing the highlights from that session. Good afternoon. Uh, so this is the, the Africa group. I can tell you that there were all other people, not only from Africa, but we have really a diversified group. 
So we are reporting, we had two uh, sessions in the morning before lunch and after lunch. And uh, uh, we had also some sessions where we had some presenters who came and presented. For urbanization, we found what are the implications for agricultural research strategies uh, of those drivers of change. For urbanization, we said there's need for labor market changes such as mechanization, high value products, uh, peri-urban agriculture also to be strengthened. Uh, changes, changing consumers' pre uh, preferences, we mentioned the high value products that need to be focused in, and also the peri-urban uh, agriculture that needs to be developed more. Uh, also, of course, we didn't mention the nutrient-dense crops which enhance uh, biodiversity conservation and uh, environmental services. We also uh, uh, mentioned demand for quality and processed food, in case people prefer processed food. When it comes to IC, ICT transition, we, we talk about the new model for reaching farmers, for example, via the cell phones, uh, and also uh, the two-way dialogue that we should uh, enhance between researchers and those receiving uh, the res using the results. About integ regional integration, because we listened to uh, a nice presentation on growth corridors, we think that for regional integration, we need to have comparative studies of impact of development cor corridors in countries. We need to have also uh, policy-oriented research on impact, for example, on free trade zones, and also understand the inclusiveness in development. When it came to climate change, we talk about a lot of technologies like drought tolerant varieties, uh, water conservation technologies, and also some social innovations like the safety nets, the, the, the early warning systems, insurance models, etc., to strengthen resilience. Now, implication on how research is organized. We say that, of course, we heard it also here, that research should be context specific and we need then to really understand better the context when we do research. We need to strengthen interaction between biophysical and social uh, research. Social science and biophysical science should go together. We need to institutionalize the re-involvement of key stakeholders in the process. And also research uh, needs to get uh, comfortable with complexity. We talk about the interdisciplinarity that we have which requires, uh, which calls for complexity in what we do. A, a partnerships should be for consultation and information sharing to build ownership. It, of course, implies, a, I think I jumped one. No. So it implies, of course, effective communication strategy or system to be in place. Of course, we have different partners uh, which uh, needed uh, uh, at, at different stages of the research, like a discovery, at uh, a proof of concept, and scaling stages. So uh, we have mentioned all those partners. But partnerships, of course, is not an easy thing, and it doesn't work all the time, uh, particularly when we consider uh, partners as uh, recipients or beneficiaries. We should rather consider them as true partners and as true users of research. Also, we need to build the capacity always of the weaker partners so that we strengthen their ownership and contribution. And of course, we think that partnerships is, should be a win-win partnership that is grounded on clear principles like rights, duties, uh, trust, and transparency. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Asset, too. That uh, was a wonderful summary of a very intense discussion. The next uh, session that we will have a report back on is a session on Asia, and our rapporteur is Chanda Nimkar. Chanda? Thanks, Rajul. Good afternoon, and everybody. Um, so uh, we had a very small group, so we didn't uh, break into any smaller groups. The whole 
uh, group had a discussion together. And it was about pathways from agricultural research to poverty reduction in Asia. So we had uh, three uh, presentations in the morning session. Uh, one from uh, Professor Mahendra Dev from India. The second one was from uh, Dr. Jing Zhu from uh, China. And the third one was from Dr. Deng in, uh, from Vietnam. And uh, we identified the key uh, pathways. Uh, the first one was that uh, productivity improvement is still important and uh, that uh, technology will remain important for agricultural growth, but uh, um, better incomes uh, for the farmers and also high value products. It was mentioned that uh, improvements in uh, and increases in horticultural production are driving the agricultural growth in India. The high value production was uh, also um, identified as a mechanism of uh, increasing the use of labor in agriculture. Especially in the context of India, it was pointed out that it is important to increase the capacity of agriculture to absorb more labor. We also had uh, quite a bit of discussion on land consolidation, since in many countries of Asia, like the big ones like India and China, plot sizes have become very, very small. And uh, so this has uh, become a really important issue, how to deal with uh, small holdings. And it was mentioned that many times uh, farmers find their own ways uh, to deal with these things. One of them is uh, many farmers rent uh, lands of other farmers. There is also the advent of uh, farmer producer companies. There's a big program started by the World Bank in India to uh, encourage these producer companies, which um, encourages farmers to uh, cooperate. We also talked about policy tools and mechanisms, especially subsidies and the impact they have on natural resource use. The wisdom of uh, government investing in large infrastructure and the comparison between, say, um, rural infrastructure like rural roads and very large irrigation projects. And we also talked about safety nets. Then uh, the last aspect was uh, nutrition or health and use of agricultural products for new uses, like uh, our reasons like health and cosmetics or uh, herbal medicines and so on. And that also comes under the diversification. So uh, we actually came up with some very big questions to which we did not know the answers, but uh, we felt that these questions need to be tackled. Uh, the first one was, should the CGIAR focus on high value consumer driven crops? Because uh, they may only be locally important. So far the CG has focused on uh, international public goods and whether uh, they need to focus on these uh, crops now. Should the CG focus on nurturing uh, farm? And we also talked about uh, contract farming in this uh, context. Also, uh, we talked about how to manage risk from uh, the increasing variability of uh, climate change and should the CGIR get involved in risk management. And should uh, the CG also focus on research around agricultural investments such as subsidies and infrastructure. And then in the afternoon session, uh, we had um, two uh, sort of leading discussions on partnerships. And then again, the aspects that we came up with uh, were that can we have consumer driven partnerships and the range of issues that we discussed were uh, what are the incentives for different partners who benefits and how the power balance and knowledge in partnerships matchmaking and brokering and use the use of media partnership maintenance over a longer term um, the capacity to engage in partnerships and how to evaluate uh, partnerships. So that is the gist of the discussion in our session. Thank you very much. 
Thank you very much, Chanda. These were the two regional breakout sessions. You will have seen some common themes coming out there, consumer-driven, capacity, partnerships, climate change. And that brings us to the third breakout session. That session was on the regional differences and the impact of climate change. And we have two presenters there. First one is Carl Deering from CARE, and the second presenter will be Ana Maria Lobo Guerrero from CCAPS. And together, they're going to do this in five minutes. It is going to be a dance. Thank you, Rajul. Um, two and a half minutes starts now, not from when you introduce me, I hope. Um, so, so very briefly, um, the conclusions from the breakout session on climate change and poverty. We heard a presentation from uh, Maureen Marin, uh, which addressed some research that's been carried out on the uh, correlation between climate change and poverty. And it was clear that these um, uh, relationships are under-researched. Um, the empirical evidence is still weak. Uh, the studies um, that were looked at uh, looked across a, s a certain number of issues such as consumption, uh, prices, income, um, nutrition, productivity, um, but they predominantly stu uh, focus on vulnerability and productivity and not linkages with poverty reduction per se. Uh, there was also little or no attention to post-production processes, so value chain engagement, um, um, post-harvest management, uh, prices engagement with markets. And then it was also found, the, the presentation said that the focus on it, there was a focus on extreme events, but not in a comprehensive approach that examines both the impacts of extremes and the longer term changes um, and social inclusion transformational adaptation. So there was a lot of attention to uh, social transformation and social inclusion issues. So the research needs, we broke into groups and, and asked uh, people to come back with um, conclusions and proposals for research. We need more detailed livelihood studies that consider agrobiodiversity, agro value chains, off-farm income, migration, and particularly gender and social differentiation came out. Uh, we also need to um, understand how to increase resilience to climate change through the indigenous and scientific knowledge um, and also su uh, successful adaptation models. What are the successful models? But the indigenous knowledge came up in every, uh, in all of the breakout sessions, so that, that was uh, an important one. And then we need to understand how to identify maladaptation early uh, and to deal with trade-offs. And finally, we need to examine opportunities for livelihood enhancement under climate change and to understand of networks and social networks and what they bring to adaptation and livelihood. So I'll pass over to my colleague for the second slide. Okay. So we had a really uh, interesting conversation and basically we focus on partnerships for impact. So then how to translate knowledge generation to knowledge application taking into account climate change. And there were some of the conclusions that were already discussed by the previous groups, but uh, we, we have three main conclusions for, from our discussion. And uh, the main thing is that partnerships are recognized globally as important. There are very important elements to generate impact. But the actual partnerships that we have uh, been working are often far from ideal. So, and uh, there was a discussion around incentives. So what are the incentives to drive these partnerships? And really important to, to, to understand why these specific partners are working together. And then in terms of the next step, to develop partnership for scaling up. So um, 
there was a very interesting discussion in terms of um, we as the science community many times try to create new arrangements in order to generate impact. And most of the cases, these arrangements are already in place. And we have to figure out where do we fit and where is our comparative advantage. So don't spend time and resources trying to create new things, but use the ones that are already in place and try to see where you can make a difference. It is very important to have a good conceptual framework and understand the context of the partnership, even before engaging it, in it. And some examples are using value chains approaches to identif identify the key actors, define clear roles, and understand incentives and power relationships. Uh, we discussed platforms, the importance of multi-stakeholder platforms to engage different actors across the scales where needed. And there was a third po four point that was interesting, and that was we need to invest in communication with our partners. So sometimes think different to be successful. I think, and we think, that it is the time to, to, to take this partnership issue seriously. Thank you. Thank you very much, Carl and Anna. I invite the rapporteur for the next session to come up. This was the fourth and last breakout session, and it was on understanding the impact delivery from agricultural research. The rapporteur is Leslie Lipper from the ISPC Secretariat. We still need to work a lot more on that. Thank you very much. I think uh, this, this section, more than any of the other ones, needs a bit more explanation. What was it about? because we didn't really have a, a presentation earlier about it, no? And we actually had a lot of people come to find out what it was about and had some very good discussion. What this action was about, the CGIR is now is tasked with generating development outcomes along the AR4D continuum. So we have to understand better the links between the innovation processes and delivering these development outcomes at scale. And so we're trying to work towards a framework for assessing case studies, empirical work, to look at can, can we identify these key factors for what's going to give us these development outcomes at scale, and can we use this then to build an analytical framework to take forward, to use for ex ante planning. And another one was about a major success in the northeast of Brazil with small pr producers. And they were t in the presentations, the presenters started to, they told the story essentially, and so that gave a basis for starting to talk about, well, what are the key elements? Of, can we start to define what do we think are the key elements of innovation? And this was the discussion at the end of the first session. And one of the things that was clear in both of them, that there was some already some evidence generated by research of technologies that were effective, i.e. like the vaccine. Um, there was a there was the business case. There was an economic case that was made, but it was also became clear that there was a lot of time in other, but certainly was an, a factor in both capacity building, flexibility, and then this, as I said, the time dimension was important. Okay, so the, these were things that we sort of finished off the first session, and then in the second section, we came back and said, look, we want to be looking at what are the elements of an analytical framework to guide this scientific inquiry on this. We'd like to be able to have uh, this analytical framework. So a, a framework was put up that had these four dimensions to it, impact setting typologies, innovation environment typologies, innovation decision domains, and development impact typologies. And the group was tasked with comment on this. Do you think this will work? Is this going to give us enough? Is there something missing? Is there something wrong? And the response was, which I have, unfortunately, I did not summarize all the responses here, but I assure you to my working group that they've been carefully collated and they've been summarized. I just want to hit the key points. I think people thought it was a useful way to start, but there was a lot of questions. First of all, what is the framework being used for? And that is this interpreting, it's an interpretive framework or is an analytical framework. You have to be very clear that there's biases in it. Fine. 
second thing is, now there's a lot of things missing. It depends a lot what your technology generation process is, how it was started, how it was the problem defined. Was that participatory or where did that come from? Um, how much are you taking into account a political dimension was also raised. Uh, then further questions were also raised on uh, what exactly was going to be included in each of these different dimensions and asking for better clarification. So in the end, the group, we summarized those uh, key points, and we agreed that we're going to keep working on putting together these key points that can form a framework for first analysis of case studies in order to develop a more analytical framework for a theory of change. And that's the report. Leslie, thank you very much. All you've done is whetted our interest for the next round. These four breakout sessions were very intensive. I wish I could have cloned myself to be in all four at the same time. It's a great privilege and an honor to introduce Professor Gabis Ejeta. All of us know him, but it is truly an honor to introduce you in this setting, in this context, in this country. Professor Gabisa is a distinguished professor of plant breeding and genetics and international agriculture in the Department of Agronomy at Purdue University. He was born and raised in a small rural community in West Central Ethiopia. He completed his B.S. in plant sciences from Alemaya College in 1973, and then he attended graduate school at Purdue University, earning his master's and his Ph.D. in plant breeding and genetics. Professor Gabisa is a member of the CGIR family. Early in his career, he worked for five years with ICRISAT in South Sudan before he joined uh, Purdue University. He continues to serve the CGIR in a number of capacities, including as member of the Science Council, as a member of the Consortium Board, on the steering committee of this event over here, and in many other capacities. He is a fellow of the American Association for the Advancement of Science, a fellow of the Crop Science Society of America, a fellow of the American Society of Agronomy, the recipient of many honors, many recognitions, and I'll just mention two of them. He's the recipient of the 2009 World Food Prize and a National Medal of Honor from the President of Ethiopia. Professor Gebisa, we are so much looking forward to your address on capacity development. Thank you. Again, uh, thank you for your kind introduction. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to join you here and to have pulled me in in the organization of uh, this conference. Um, capacity building, as many of you would know, is not a new agenda. Uh, it's a very old agenda in the system. We've all been thinking about this. We've been all wanting to get something done about it. Uh, but off late has been an agenda that has been recalcitrant in terms of generating resources uh, to mobilize those for, for this particular need. Although there, are, there is a sign of resurgence of interest, both in the donor community and among global institutions that are engaged in capacity development in general. Uh, I will uh, start my presentation with a reference to a time maybe about eight, nine years ago when I was a member of the Science Council. Uh, in general, uh, if I may share with you my bias, earnest research for development appeals to me. It makes absolute sense. It justifies the existence of the global research community on why we are interested with um, uh, public resources to do this kind of research. 
And I had just spent at that time about a year of sabbatic in helping put together the Alliance for Green Revolution for Africa. So in, in one of the first meetings at the, CG, at the Science Council, I, I shared my bias by indicating that the lack of division of labor, the uncoordinated linkages that seem to exist globally in our global research community bothers me. Uh, I think both for resource efficiency as well as for effectiveness of impact, a good, proper, well deliberately uh, put together division of labor uh, need to be thought out and generated. And at, what, at one of those meetings, uh, Ruben Echeverria, the executive secretary at the time of the Science Council, asked me if I could put together a thought piece on that. And I guess they talked over with Rudy uh, Rabenge, who was the chair, and they asked me to put together a thought piece. Um, as a reference,